There's one paragraph, Grandpa. Right? For me, little charity, the granddaughter. First one, first contribution, just one paragraph. Equally damaging to the credibility of the evidence is the self-contradictory character of its details. It was obtained by examining the accused on a series of charges elaborately drawn up and by requiring answers to each article in succession, so the general features of the so-called confessions were suggested in advance. Had the charges been true, there could have been little variation in the answers. But in place of a definite faith or a systematic ritual, we find every possible variation that could suggest itself to witnesses striving to invent stories that should satisfy their torturers. Some say they were taught deism, that God in heaven alone was to be worshipped. Others, that they were forced to renounce God. The usual formula reported, however, was simply to renounce Christ or Jesus, while others were called upon to renounce Notre Seer or the Propheta, or Christ, the Virgin, and the Saints. Some professed that they could not recollect whether the renunciation had been of God or of Christ. Some, time, we hear that instruction was given that they should not believe in Christ, but that he was a false prophet, that he suffered for his own sins, but more frequently that the only reason alleged was that such was the rule of the order. It was the same with the idol, which has so greatly exercised the imagination of commentators. Some witnesses swore that it was produced whenever a neophyte was received and that its adoration was part of the ceremony. Others that it was only exhibited and worshipped in the secrecy of chapters. By far the greater number, however, had never seen it or heard of it. Of those who professed to have seen it, scarce two described it alike within the limits suggested by the articles of accusation, which spoke of it as a head. Sometimes it is black, sometimes white, sometimes with black hair, and sometimes white with black mixed and again with a long white beard. Some witnesses saw its neck and shoulders covered with gold. One declared that it was a demon, Mafe, on which no one could look without trembling. Another that it had four eyes, carbuncles, which lighted up the room. Another that it had two faces, another three faces, another four legs, two behind and two before. And yet another said that it was a statue with three heads. On one occasion, it is a picture, on another a painting, on a plaque, on another a small female figure, which the preceptor draws from under his garments, and on another the statue of a boy, a cubit in height, sedulously concealed in the treasury of the preceptory. According to the testimony of one witness, it does degenerated into a calf. Sometimes it is called the Savior, and sometimes Baphomet or Magneth, corruptions of Mahomet, and is worshipped as Allah. Sometimes it is God creating all things, causing the trees to bloom and the grass to germinate. And then again, it is a friend of God who can approach him and intercede for the suppliant. Sometimes it gives responses, and sometimes it is accompanied or replaced by the devil in the form of a black or gray cat or raven who occasionally answers the questions addressed to him. The performance winding up like the witch's sabbath with the introduction of demons in the form of Beautiful women. Well, well, well. Grandpa, do you expect me to be a lesbian?